The team that attracted nearly 20,000 fans last night <laughs> number one, baby. was still drawing a crowd nearly 24 hours later. It is huge, you know, I don't know, I can't explain it, but we'll never forget it, that's for sure. Today, the Gophers hit the home ice for one last time, but they didn't return empty-handed, bringing home the national championship, Minnesota's first in 23 years. People ask me, how do you feel? I, I say, you know what, call me tomorrow, I'll tell you. And now I'm saying that again today, so give me a couple more days, I guess. There's not a better way to go out, not a better feeling in the world than what, what happened last night and you know what happened today, and we can cherish, cherish this for the rest of our lives. Winning a national championship isn't just great for the players and the fans, it's also special for the alums, the guys who used to wear the maroon and gold. Bill Baker captained the 79 title team, and today he's congratulating another. This is just uh, wonderful to take that, you know, kind of the monkey off our back, so to speak. Everybody's been using that term, but I think it's really true. But this week, we're champions. <laughs> you could not have written a better script. 22 years, away it. It's at St. Paul. We went in overtime. It's in our backyard. I mean, what more do you want? We got the Hobie Baker winner. It's just the best. And it's a storybook complete with the happy ending. Jason Elliott, Nine Sports. All right, Jason, thank you. For the first time in school history, the U has two national championships to celebrate in the same school year. Go for hockey and go for wrestling. Well, just like a new national championship, but for many fans, too much celebrating left them facing criminal charges. Good evening, I'm Dean Staley. And I'm Vanita Sockhart. We'll have much more on what happened after the game in just a couple of minutes. First, we want to show you how the new national champs are celebrating today. Joe Schmidt is here with a look at the golden moments. See, none of these guys have slept yet, because you ever think, it, it's hard to sleep with a big smile on your face. <laughs> these guys are still having a good time. There's only one thing better than winning a national championship, and that's sharing it with your fans. This was a celebration that was 23 years in the making. About 4,000 fans were at Mariucci today to see this, the hardware the Gophers won for all their hard work. All the seniors had a chance to thank the fans and talk about their quest to become the best. Well, I guess uh, this is it. This is the last time I'll probably be out in this ice for a very long time. And, you know, dreams do come true. And you find that out in a short amount of time. I'd just like to thank God for, for making the game of hockey. Um, you know what? <laughs> It, sometimes it seems it seems like it's about all I do, and some people say I can't do it at all. So it's it's been a fun time. Everyone on this team gets along. We're just a just a great group of guys, and uh, I think we'll be best friends forever. So thank you, and thank you to the fans. Here's tape outside. You missed it. Here's the game winning goal in overtime. The puck is loose out front, and Grant Patelny will slide this one in front of the net for the goal, and the celebration was on. The Gophers beat Maine four to three in overtime for their fourth. The national title. You'll never, you'll see that shot a million times <laughs> and over it's the next cool every time. That's right. Also, part of the program today, the three captains from the previous national championships were at Minnesota were part of the ceremony. Much more on the Gopher National Championship coming up in a few minutes on Sports Rep. Head coach John Lucia and goalie Adam Hauser will be here along with Jay Robinson, a couple of national championship Gophers. National Championship night. Thanks Looking so. forward to it. You bet. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Joe. You don't have to wait to get a memento of the Gophers' championship season. Within minutes of the big win, a local company started printing thousands of T-shirts to mark the occasion. By the start of today's ceremony, they were already into their second printing. We'll have much more on the national champs coming up in Sports Plus at 1032. Get another look at highlights from the Gophers' national championship win. That win brought hundreds out in the streets to celebrate, but police say some went too far. Tonight, more than 20 people face riot and disorderly conduct charges. Last night, the crowd swarmed within a 20-block area on campus. Bill Shirk shows us what five Eyewitness News photojournalists caught on tape. <laughs> Finally, night. The Gophers won it all. Best hockey team in the world. But on campus, Minnesota Knights turned downright nasty. Let's go, baby. Let's go on the street. Yeah, party, baby. Yeah. 
but all the people are dry, so even if I suck, I don't think that they know because here's the 5 -0. Stuff's going on everywhere. On the streets. <laughs> the crowd simply overwhelmed. Rocks, but he did. We've had several officers hit with some bricks and uh, rocks, a lot of rocks thrown. This is why I came to college, man. In all, officers arrested 25 people. Many more got a face full of mates. This is just your first time. I've got straight twice tonight. The golfers, they're now champions. But for a few fans, well, that's a different story. A few dumb group people out of the group got to ruin it for everybody. Hi, Mom. I'm sorry. That's why college kids get a bad reputation. In Minneapolis, Bill Shirk. Insanity. Pure insanity. Eyewitness News. It's crazy. The police chief says the group causing trouble was quite small, considering thousands of people celebrated on campus. A moment ago, in that story, you saw several police officers trying to restrain a student. Tonight, that student and witnesses say the officers used excessive force. Channel 5's Kristen Steiner joins us now from the newsroom with details. Kristen? Well, Dean, Minneapolis police are required to follow a strict policy when it comes to the use of force in trying to make an arrest. Tonight, officers are accused of using excessive force in making an arrest last night. The agency that normally would investigate that kind of complaint will have to close its doors on April 30th due to city budget cuts. But we asked the head of the agency to tell us what she thinks about the incident captured on tape. Take a look at how the scene played out through the lens of our camera. One witness was quick to judge the actions by police. Police brutality. But were the officers using excessive force? We took the question and the videotape to Patricia Hughes, the head of the Minneapolis Civilian Police Review Authority. To an ordinary citizen who's never seen um, an individual being arrested by the police, that definitely does look like police brutality. But Hughes has investigated hundreds of complaints like this and says if she digs deeper, she might find other circumstances that can't be seen on the tape. Initially, when I saw the punching, um, you know, it does not look good. However, we couldn't see the boy's arms. What I'm assuming happened is that he was resisting somehow. Ryan Grandlin, the young man who's seen in the videotape, was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct. Here's his first-hand account of what happened. First, they tackled me to the ground, and then they, obviously, you guys probably all saw it. They punched me, like, good, like, five times or something got a knee to the back and then and then when I was down with the handcuffs behind my back then they sprayed pepper spray in my eyes. Granlin doesn't deny he threw rocks but says he didn't hit anybody. He points to his cuts and bruises and says he thinks the police officers went overboard. It was kind of like they were going excessive. Now we've asked top Minneapolis police officials to take a look at the tape and aide to Chief Robert Olson tells us the chief saw the tape on our earlier news and doesn't want to comment. The aide says if Ryan Granlin wants to file a complaint, then the department will look into it. Granlin tells us tonight he did not resist arrest. He also says he plans to look into hiring an attorney. Dean. All right. Thanks, Kristen. Mm -hmm.